welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, today we're talking about motorcycles once again. We love motorcycles. You know, the fun part about riding in Southern California, when you go to a place like the Rock Store or some of the other hangouts, somebody always shows up with something modified, something a little bit different. When I see a bike that intrigues me, I like to invite them down here to uh, the garage and film it and show people what they're doing. And when I saw this BMW, it just knocked me out because I was trying to figure out exactly what it was. It's a modern BMW, yet it has a drum brake, and it's got these kind of cool MV looking exhausts, and I didn't recognize the frame. So I kind of, you know, you hang around and kind of wait for the owner to come back. And his name is uh, Larry Rumstead, and he and his wife Carol, this is what they do. It's a small company, and they modify these bikes. Larry, Carol, come on in, you guys. Good to see you, Jay. Thank you. Hi, Carol. How are you? Great. Uh, like you, I'm finding out a lot about this bike for the first time. I saw it. I said, hey, give me a call, and he brought it down here today. So tell people exactly what we have and how you got into this. Well, this is um, an homage, so to speak, to uh, the bikes, of the, the cafes of the late 60s, early 70s. Right. Uh, my wife said it herself. She said, this would be the BMW that the Italians would have built. Right, okay. <laughs> I wanted to get a, a lot of different uh, bikes on this without it looking like I put a lot of different bikes on here and that it all blended mm -hmm. together. So you've got the Thruxton t uh, section here with the, for, the, for the mounting of the shock. Right, yes, yes. That's the, the Veloset Thruxton style. Right. So you get that preload adjustment, but it's also, these are also uh, fully, fully adjustable uh, triple rate spring, uh, rebound compression dampened springs. I mean, they're just phenomenal. And it's an MV Agusta America style gas tank, a little bit narrower, a little bit sloped so you can get your knees around it. Right. And like a Ducati 900 SS tailpiece, or the seat section. And uh, I've always wanted to see if I could do anything with that Suzuki Water Buffalo front brake. Yeah, isn't that one of the best looking front brakes it's ever? It's one of the best looking front brakes. I don't know what, how good it is for stopping, but it's a great looking brake. And, and that's the important thing. <laughs> You're in California. Yeah. Looking good is better that's than right. feeling good. <laughs> looking good is better than feeling good. You know, I love it because it always looked like one of those Italian brakes from the uh, Gramaca, how do you say that? Uh, Gramaca? Gramaca, Gramaca, yeah. 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 I, and you know, there's something sexy about one of those big drums. I mean, the, they just look yeah. cool, but I just, yeah. I just, and then, well, there you go. You got a little bit of uh... yeah. And this is this is uh, you know hydraulic assisted. Oh, okay. So it has a different feel, a completely different feel than a cable, and uh, it does work. And it uh, it does uh, servo, uh, so it works fine. And then and then so I just, uh, but I but I love that K bike motor. Yeah. And I, whenever you ride one of these. They're five speed, and you're always looking for six gear on a K-bike. Right. You're always looking for it, just, just because of the ratios and the way they rev. Right. So I wanted a six speed, but the six speed doesn't fit the trellis frame. So I modified the trellis frame. Uh, Let me ask you something. So you've always been a BMW guy, yeah. but you obviously like Italian bikes. Yeah. Why not just buy the Italian bike? <laughs> <laughs> Why not get the MV Augusta of the Ducati? <laughs> I got to do it the hard way. Yeah. I mean, were, I, you, were you always a K-bike guy? Uh, no, no, actually, I was a boxer guy, pretty right. much a purist right. for years. And I love all bikes, though. Right. I've had all kinds of different bikes. I've had Ducatis, you know, but, but uh, I, I've always been a boxer guy. And then uh, I poo-pooed the, you know, and, and turned away from the K-bike because I thought it was the ugly stepsister the right. kind of thing. And then I, chance, I had a chance to uh, ride one once and, well, you know, seeing is believing, and, yeah. and it, was, it was different. Thing. So, Carol, tell me about your input on this here. Look, it's a single seat, so obviously you ride your I don't own get bike. to ride this yeah. one, so Larry um, built this one for me. This was one of our first builds, actually. This was inspired by one of the, a vintage BMW that I saw. And uh, I really liked that that vintage look. Right. Uh, our first version of this was was a higher seat, yeah. the regular seat, and it just wasn't comfortable for me. I was a new rider. I got my license uh, when I turned 50. Yeah. And um, it was a little bit too high and top heavy for me. So. Well, see, that was always a problem. A lot of people think a heavy motorcycle is not a problem. The real trick is you want to be able to put your feet on the floor. Yeah. And women can handle a bike just as well as a guy, but if their legs aren't long enough to touch the floor, then you're, you're sort of doing this. So by having the lower seat, when you come to a light, you can put both feet down. Yeah, I feel really secure on this. As we got it down to 27 inches. I found the right, right boots. Now, Larry, I would have thought, looking at the color and the design of the bags, you would have put the Earl's Fork. <laughs> yeah, because it has. I, I want to do that. It has actually. that fifties period kind of. Yeah, look it's to supposed it. to give that kind of a slash too. We call this a retro modern. Nice yeah. touch. Nice oh, thank touch. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and I love the Monty pipes. Those are hand formed by a gentleman in England. Let me show you my 
seven, my uh, MV Augusta, you'll see this. It, it's the exact same pipe, the most beautiful pipes in the world. Take a look. So tell me, you tell me you like the design and the aesthetics. What, what, what part of that? Well, we go over every, every detail Larry and I discuss. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll tell him, no, I don't think that looks right. And I've actually come up with a lot of ideas. Could you do this? And mm -hmm. he'll say, you know, I, I think I could do that. Tell me about Just, this color. I don't recognize this color. It's not, it's not a BMW color. No, this is, this is the uh, Imola Green from the 70s. It was, oh, from the Ducati. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what that, it is. With the fiberglass tank. Okay. Right, right. So the 900 SS or the 750. The, um, the Paul Smart uses it now, but that actually took this color. This is, this is an original color. And what's interesting about this is, this is there is no color code for this. Ducati doesn't have a color code. So when you do a restoration, you have to guess. <laughs> Yeah. Even I called Ducati and I said, "What do you do?" He said, "We guess." Yeah, yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so I, I got that. I found this. It was in a it was in a painter's uh, um, a milk cart, milk crate. Right. The paint is in a small pint can in yeah. the very bottom. A rusty rusty cans piled up cans on top of it. Took me three years. Got it. And that's it. So that's the color. Tell me about the wheelbase. It's longer than stock, correct? Actually, it, it appears to be. It is, but, but it's these, not? It's not really. This is the shortest wheelbase. It's 61. Okay. This is 61 and a half. Okay. This is actually 62, and that's 63. Now, the engine itself, basically stock, or have you modified pistons and cam and what? I haven't had. No, it's, a, it's, it's got 130 stock brake horsepower. So right. uh, with the power to weight ratio, this is 529 pounds right. dry. Power to weight ratio is amazing. So... What I did, though, is I put 230 cc injectors, the EV6 injectors, mm -hmm. nice spray pattern, and inch and three quarter intake runners. And so I, that gives me a lot of torque and, and the, it gives a, gives a lot, of, lot of area. Now, what do we have here? Tell me about these gauges here on this particular model. Right, you've got the oil and the, uh, the water temp gauge. And when you're riding, you it's can just- It's kind of hard to- No, you really don't. They're angles, so when you, you can look down and you see the needles, you'll know where the needles right, are. Right, right. So and then when you look up, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Let me see where my needles, ah! <laughs> So how does this work? I've got an old K bike. I want to freshen up. Do I come to you? Does the, does the um, owner of this bike say, I want chrome wheels, I want this, I want that, or did they just leave it to you to interpret? Well, they, can give, me what, they give me the idea that they have, and then they primarily leave it to me and interpret. So you don't buy the bike, fix it, and then sell it. The customer comes to you with an existing bike already. They can, or I can just do what I do with these. These are built from the scr yeah, from their frame up oh, okay. from scratch. And this is the first one you did, or that one? Which, 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 uh, which this? Well, actually, this one of these oh, four. These, yeah, these okay. four. This is this is the uh, this is the uh, commuter version. Okay. Uh, it's it's basically an updated standard. Right. Yeah. But it has better brakes. It has uh, you know it has a the the Frenched in the the instrument into the oh, gate. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give it that '50s Harley Sportster yeah. look, open like that. Very nicely done. So it's just the two of you. So I'm looking at what, six months, nine months, once I bring my bike to you? Yeah, you've got it right. Between yeah. six and nine months. Nine yeah. months for a complete, from the frame up, custom, six months for something that has some of these elements already involved. So it's about six to nine months, yeah. Well, I got to admit, this one here is my favorite. This is the mm -hmm. one that really caught my eye when I saw it because if you're not a real BMW person, you might think, oh, that's a stock one, or maybe mm -hmm. that's a stock one, until you look closely. Uh, even this, this looks like a bike that the factory would produce. It's nicely done, beautiful detail work and the workmanship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really the key, you know. That's, that's what's great about uh, living here in Southern California. I've got all these great sort of engineers and ex-aerospace guys. What is your background? Are you an engineer? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm ex-aerospace. All, right. <laughs> all right, well, there you go. That's what's kind of fun. You see, they got nothing to do. <laughs> so this is what they do. They do cool stuff. I mean... All the great machinists, they all live around this area. So you kind of drive around and you look at garage doors that are open and you see guys working on stuff. So I imagine you do this out of the house or you yeah. have a shop. Well, no, it's my townhouse garage. Well, that's, that's what's kind of fun. That's mm -hmm. what's kind of fun. And it's just, just beautifully, beautifully done. You know something? I think it's about time to take it for a ride. <laughs> Okay, impressions after one mile. 
Uh, neutral, extremely easy to find. I hate bikes where I have to constantly kick it to find neutral. It's really annoying. That's really nice. You know, it made me laugh when Larry said he was in the aerospace industry because aerospace guys don't settle. You know, a lot of mechanics will just settle for that's good enough. But guys that work in the aerospace industry know stuff has to be perfect. That's what really drew me to this bike, the attention to detail, how nicely everything is finished and how nicely everything fits in. Because in aerospace, you can't screw around. This bike is kind of like the best of European motorcycle. You got the Italian styling with the Monte pipes. You got the German engineering with that fantastic K motor. And of course, you got the English look with the Veloset adjustable shocks back there. And of course, the Italian looking front brake, which is actually Japanese. <laughs> Nicely integrated. These K bikes are so torquey, you know, these motors. I mean, I'm only at 4,000 RPM, the red line's 9,500. Let's see what that red line looks like. What a nice two lane road this is for this motorcycle. You know, I like bikes like this where you don't really need to get into sixth gear. Well, the mirrors are great if you like seeing the top of your shoulder. That's fantastic. I would probably make the stock a little bit longer. And uh, as much as I like the look of those brakes, they're not as good as this, but they got the job done. But it has a real period feel with modern power. It's really exciting to drive. Let's take it up uh, in the freeway. Let's try out that six gear he was talking about and see how it cruises. Come on. You know, to me, one of the great joys of motorcycling is just clicking through that gearbox, just touching the clutch and just applying a little bit of pressure and feeling it slip into gear. I see what Larry means about sixth gear, you know. Let me drop it down to fifth. That's where you would have been before, a little buzzy. But here you go, doing 70 and you're turning just about 4,500 RPM which sounds like a lot, but it's really just half the red line. It tracks nice, straight and true. You know, this is really fun. It's, uh, it's really taking a bike and making it personal. You know, there isn't another bike like this in the world. Uh, nowhere, this is the only one there is. And the fact that, uh, you know, you go to Larry with your old K bike and you go, I want to make it something different, something special. And you know it's going to be safe and it's going to handle well and it's going to be reliable. This is a real motorcycle, you know, built in the guy's garage. It's uh, nicely done. Boy, that is very nice. You know, the one thing you don't see on this website is all the stuff that we pass on. You know, there are people come by that bring, bring bikes and things that they've made. And I go, you know, the chain's loose, it's leaking around. They go, oh, well, the, yeah, and the production model won't be like that. Well, it doesn't work that way. You're bringing it here for us to see. You know, if you want uh, your bike just to run, get a mechanic. If you want it to be engineered, you get yourself an aerospace guy. <laughs> That's kind of the way it works. I mean, the, just the detail, 
because aerospace guys don't settle for stuff. It's got to be just right because it's aerospace. It's, you know, that's what it is. It's outer space. You're dead. And this is a, a bike I, I can feel really confident riding. It's just nicely, nicely done. Larry Carroll, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Good luck. And, uh, Thanks so much. Check out his website. You see the kind of cool stuff he's doing. It's uh, nicely done. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>